The universal virtual cultures preservation of the linguistic, cultural, and religious heritage becomes not only a testament to the rich history, but also a guide for navigating the challenges of an ever-changing global landscape. The Fiumi's journey, marked by migration, conquest, and adaptation, contributes a vibrant thread to the diverse tapestry of West African culture spot. The Fiumi people, numbering approximately 38 million, have carved a distinctive niche in West African history and culture. Their origins, though the subject of scholarly debate, intertwin with the Senegambia region, suggesting a deep-rooted connection to the West African landscape over a millennium. Historical and genetic evidence now leans towards an indigenous West African origin, challenging earlier speculations about North African or Arabic ancestry. The Fiumi's dynamic journey unfolds against the backdrop of social, political, and economic complexities. Their expansion eastward and westward in the 16th century marked a pivotal moment, leading to the emergence of settled and nomadic factions, spearheaded by leaders like Tengwala Koli and later Usman Dan Fodio. The Fiumi's influence extended across regions culminating in the establishment of empires and jihad states in the 17th and 18th centuries. Religion has been a cornerstone of Fiumi identity, with Islam shaping their spiritual, social, and political landscapes. The adoption of the Maliki school and adherence to Sunni Muslim practices illustrate a deep-seated commitment to their faith. The rise of empires led by Fulani leaders, known as the Mayas, mirrored the intertwining of religious and political authority. The Fulani's nomadic heritage, characterized by cattle herding and extensive trade routes, has not only shaped their economic practices, but has also contributed significantly to the broader West African economic fabric. The clash with settled agricultural communities over resources reflects the complexities inherent in balancing traditional lifestyles with evolving societal norms. Cultural practices, such as intricate tattoos and spear duels, serve as vivid expressions of human identity. The adherence to a strict caste system adds another layer to their social fabric, delineating roles and statuses within their community. In the face of modernization, the Fulani grapple with the potential erosion of their nomadic identity, raising questions about the preservation of their unique cultural heritage. Linguistically, the Fulani's few language showcases a fusion of influences, incorporating known words from Arabic and Berber. Their ability to communicate in multiple languages, including French or English, reflects a historical adaptability to diverse cultural contexts. As education plays a crucial role, Fulani Muslims often possess literacy in Arabic emphasizing the continuity of their intellectual traditions. The Fiumi's story is one of resilience, adaptation, and a delicate dance between tradition and change. 
Their ability to navigate the shifting landscapes of West Africa, from the Sahel grasslands to the modern urban centers, speaks to the enduring strength of their cultural tapestry. As they continue to forge their path in the 21st century, the Fulani people contribute a unique chapter to the ongoing narrative of West African diversity and heritage. Being brave and fearless is also a very important aspect of the Fulani, and that is obvious by their numerous weapons. One tradition is that when two boys reach coming of age, the two boys hit each other with their spears, not showing any pain but instead laughing. Many have died in these ceremonies, which are now against the law in many countries, but continue to be practiced. The Fulani normally raise large amounts of cattle, and have therefore settled in the large plain areas of Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso and Guinea. The Fulani hold to a strict caste system. The four caste subdivisions are the nobility, merchants, blacksmiths, and descendants of slaves of wealthy Fulani. The Fulani people, numbering about 38 million, are found mostly in the western part of Africa. They are also known as the Farb or Peels and in the Middle Ages, covering the 5th to the 15th century of the Common Era, were very reliant on cattle herding. The Fulani people trace their origin far back 1,000 years to the Senegambia region. They are categorized among the most culturally diverse and widely dispersed peoples in the whole of Africa. Based on 2019 records, in Nigeria alone there exist about 15.3 million Fulani people about 4 million in Senegal, 2.9 million in Mali, 2.3 million in Cameroon, 2 million in Niger, and a great number in other communities across West Africa. Today, the majority of the Fulani people live in more than 18 African countries with some remaining as nomads. The Fulani people's dynamic narrative extends beyond political and religious realms, encompassing social structures, cultural practices, and their interactions with neighboring communities. The Fulani's societal fabric is woven with a deep appreciation for beauty, expressed through intricate tattoos adorning their bodies. Notably, the blackish color of a Fulani woman's lips, often a result of henna or tattooing, serves as a distinctive feature, reflecting the importance placed on aesthetics. Beyond the adornments, the Fulani people maintain a strong sense of pride, evident in their nomadic herding lifestyle. Cattle, the most prized possessions in Fulani society, serve as a measure of wealth. However, this centrality of cattle has sparked conflicts, particularly with local farmers, as the herds occasionally graze on their fields, revealing the complexities of coexistence between different livelihoods in West Africa. Traditional ceremonies, such as spear duels marking the coming of age for young boys, showcase the Fiori's emphasis on bravery and fearlessness. While such rituals have historical significance, 
some have faced legal restrictions due to safety concerns. These cultural practices underscore the Fiori's commitment to preserving their unique heritage, even as external influences and modernization pose challenges to their traditional way of life. As modes of transportation modernize across West Africa, the Fiori face the risk of losing their nomadic identity. Settlements in farms and villages become a necessity, presenting a stark contrast to their historical lifestyle. The rise to political dominance occurred in the 17th and 18th centuries with key figures like Asmund and Fodio, establishing the Fulani Empire. Migration patterns, influenced by Berber movements, brought the Fulani into contact with various African tribes, often resulting in conquests. The Fulani's story is one of complexity and diversity, spanning centuries and continents, reflecting the intricate tapestry of West African history and culture. The origin of the Fulani has long been a matter of curiosity and conjecture among scholars. However, it is generally accepted that the forebears of all Fulani, living in the Western Sudan came from the future Toro. Linguistic evidence supports the view that historically Fulani movement was from west to east. This is so because, although the Fulani language is spoken by considerably more than millions from Senegal to at least two days east of Lake Chad, only in the Senegal area are genetic relationships traced with local languages. Fulbway, in describing Yusuman, speak of him as having been inspired by God, being extremely learned, having a likable personality, and having been a persuasive preacher. The chapter explores some features of pastoral, social, and political life. During the period of the Fulani Empire and also the social changes, following the establishment of the Protectorate, the Fulani people of West Africa are the largest nomadic group in the world. As a group they contain a vast array of diverse people who were conquered and became a part of the Fulani through the spread of Islam. The Fulani people's dynamic narrative extends beyond political and religious realms, encompassing social structures, cultural practices, and their interactions with neighboring communities. The Fulani's societal fabric is woven with a deep appreciation for beauty, expressed through intricate tattoos adorning their bodies. Notably, the blackish color of the Fulani woman's lips, often a result of henna or tattooing, serves as a distinctive feature, reflecting the importance placed on aesthetics. Beyond the adornments, the Fulani people maintain a strong sense of pride, evident in their nomadic herding lifestyle. Cattle, the most prized possessions in Fulani society, serve as a measure of wealth. However, this centrality of cattle has sparked conflicts, particularly with local farmers as the herds occasionally graze on their fields, revealing the complexities of coexistence between different livelihoods in West Africa. Traditional ceremonies, such as spear duels marking the coming of age for young boys, showcase 
A few will be emphasis on bravery and fearlessness. While such rituals have historical significance, some have faced legal restrictions due to safety concerns. These cultural practices underscore the Fiori's commitment to preserving their unique heritage, even as external influences and modernization pose challenges to their traditional way of life. As modes of transportation modernize across West Africa, the Fulani face the risk of losing their nomadic identity. Settlements in farms and villages become a necessity, presenting a stark contrast to their historical lifestyle. This shift raises questions about the preservation of Fulani culture, and the potential impacts on their societal dynamics. The Fiori's respect for a strict caste system further shapes their social structure. Divided into nobility, merchants, blacksmiths, and descendants of slaves of wealthy Fiori, this caste system influences various aspects of their lives including social interactions, economic roles, and inherited statuses. In the realm of religion, the Fiori's adoption of Islam as their core faith plays a central role in their identity. The Maliki school of Islam guides their religious practices encompassing obligations such as praying five times a day, reciting the Quran, fasting, pilgrimage to Mecca, and almsgiving. This religious foundation has not only shaped their spiritual beliefs, but has also influenced their political and social structures throughout history. The Fulani people, numbering around 38 million and spread across 18 African countries, face the challenges of balancing tradition and modernity. Their story, rooted in migration, conquest, and cultural adaptation, continues to unfold, revealing a resilient people, Navigating the complexities of a changing world while holding onto the core elements that define their identity. The origins of the Fulani people are highly disputed. Some believe that they are of North African or Arabic origin, characterized by the lighter skin and straighter hair. Some Africans even refer to the as white people. However, recent studies show that they descend from nomads, from both North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. The Fulani were the first group of people in West Africa to convert to Islam through jihads, or holy wars, and were able to take over much of West Africa and establish themselves not only as a religious group, but also as a political and economical force. The Fulani are a very proud people. They are the missionaries of Islam and continue to conquer much of West Africa. The Fulani are primarily nomadic herders and traders. Through their nomadic lifestyle they established numerous trade routes in West Africa. Many times the Fulani go to local markets and interact with the people, getting news and spreading it through much of West Africa. The most important object in Fulani society is cattle. There are many names, traditions, and taboos concerning cattle. The number of cows a person owns is a sign of his wealth. 
This has caused significant conflict in recent months between the Fulani and other ethnic groups. The reason for this conflict is that the cows will many times go into the fields and eat the grain of local farmers. As times goes on, the modes of transportation throughout West Africa have become more modernized. This modernization in transportation puts the Fulani at risk of losing their identity as nomads and forces them to settle in farms and villages. This often creates other problems, as the Fulani are a very proud people of a unique culture and are used to ruling over the other people groups. A distinctive difference between the Fulani and other African people is that the Fulani have a huge respect for beauty. Beauty is considered very important in all of the ways. This is shown as through tattoos that are put all over the body. A distinguishing feature of a Fulani woman is her lips which are many times a blackish color from the use of henna, or tattoo in the monte, your mouth. The Fulani people's cultural resilience is further evidenced by their linguistic diversity and ties to both North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. The Fulani language, known as Fula, exhibits a unique blend of influences, with long words from Arabic and Berber reflecting their interactions with North Africa. The linguistic ties between different Fulani dialects, such as Futa Toro, Futa Jalan, Mazina, Sokoto, and Adamawa, underscore the unity within their diversity in the historical migration patterns that shaped their linguistic landscape. Despite the challenges posed by external influences and changing lifestyles, the Fiori's commitment to education and linguistic diversity remains evident. Most Fiori being Muslims, possess the ability to read and write Arabic, and many are fluent in either French or English, depending on the colonial history of their respective regions. This linguistic versatility reflects their adaptability to different cultural and historical contexts. The Fulani people's nomadic past steeped in cattle herding and trade, has left an indelible mark on West African history. As they traverse the vast plains of Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Guinea, they established numerous trade routes, contributing to the economic landscape of the region. Their interactions in local markets not only facilitated trade, but also served as channels for the exchange of news, spreading information across West Africa. The Fulani's impact on the broader West African society is undeniable, and their cultural distinctiveness is manifested in a strict caste system that has endured over the centuries. The nobility, merchants, blacksmiths, and descendants of slaves each play specific roles within Fulani society, maintaining a social order that reflects historical norms and values. In the face of contemporary challenges, including the risk of losing their nomadic identity and clashes over resources with other ethnic groups, the Fulani people remain resilient. Their ability to adapt while preserving core cultural elements, 
speaks to the strength of their heritage. The fusion of traditional practices, such as spear duels and intricate body adornments, with the realities of modern life pains, a nuanced picture of a people navigating the complexities of cultural continuity in a changing world. Dutch.